Hey everybody, I'm Shane. He's Shane. I'm Lex. Welcome to it. Uh, let's. Okay, so we're gonna talk um, filters, right? Is that right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, filters. Yeah. Filters, the same. Cool. Yeah, filters Filter. collections. That's right. So I love Lex's shirt. For those of you who weren't seeing the early part from the Adam Carolla podcast, it's don't or I don't like you. It's not you. It's me. I think the back doesn't I don't say like Adam Carolla on yeah. the back. It's not you. It's me. I don't like you. <laughs> All right. Let's do this now. I think a lot of I think a lot of the customers. Let's go ahead and move over to the other camera there, JJ. Yeah. I think a lot of our customers um, shy away from reports. You know, they're used to, to seeing collections. In fact, we've seen collections used in in ways that were so ineffective. Um, to people building co a collection for every particular version of like Firefox, so they could, you know, these are the computers that have this version of Firefox. These are the ones that have this. I'm like that's. That's not what collections are for. When you start needing to know the different versions of software, that's where you want to report. Yeah. Um, and then, also, if you want to be able to send it to somebody, I mean, obviously it's kind of hard to send a collection. Yeah, the report. Yeah, the, certainly the, if you want the printed out report. Yeah. You know. Um, so the collection, the collections are meant to show you know very specific information about each computer, but um, it can't like in the collection window you don't see every application that's installed mm -hmm. for a computer. That collection window would be huge. So we're going to cover a lot of, um, you know, what's, when's appropriate to use a collection, uh, a report, and then we're going to dig down into some of the more complex filters. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, do we have, you have some questions? How can I show computers that have Windows 10? I imagine that's version 1511 on there. Sammy. 1511. All right. Well, uh, yes, you can show that. Um, we actually are going to also add a new feature. Um, this is something that was introduced by Microsoft for Windows 10, mm -hmm. specifically for Windows 10, um, this, what's known as the CB or the current branch, um, as opposed to the Windows 10 LTSB, which is the long-term servicing branch. Uh, a lot of you will probably have LTSB. That means you're you're gonna, it's kind of like the old ways of, of Windows. The you're not Windows, gonna get as many updates, which is nice. Correct, and the updates don't include new features. They include bug fixes and security fixes and stuff like that. Um, but in November of 15, Microsoft released the, a cumulative patch for um, the current branch of mm -hmm. Windows 10, and this introduces new features, right? And colloquially, they're calling it 1511. And it's just basically, if this is gonna be their if this is going to be their convention for naming it, it's just um, year, year, month, month, as yep. far as that. So it's uh, November of 2015. But the problem is, you don't see 1511 anywhere. I think that's where the questioner is coming from. Um, so we've got some Windows 10. I actually just added this collection to the collection library. If you had the collection library, just set of collections that we keep up to date for you. Under OS, workstations, you're going to see some Windows 10. And then we break those out. Here's your, these are all computers that have Windows 10, and then all Windows 10 32-bit, all Windows 10 64-bit, and then we have a Windows 10 latest version. I um, should, should probably change that from version to release, because it seems like that's the term they're coming up with. Yeah. Uh, they, they now have on machines at 1511, there's a, a registry entry called release ID that will say 1511. It's just a text one. We're going to start looking for that in the coming feature. Um, but, but you can still determine that based off the OS version. So let's take a peek. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, uh, remember, how, how do you modify what's, uh, what you see in your collection windows? I'm going to click this little customize button right here, grid. customize your grid. And that takes you to your preferences uh, window cl uh, collection page. I want the OS version. Where are we going to show that? A add column. There it is. OS version. I'm going to move that down so it's uh, maybe next, next to, to the OS. OS, yeah. There, there we go. Perfect. Is that correct? Yeah, there's the OS version. So you can see um, we've got a couple of different versions here. If you want to zoom in if, if you can, JJ. On Windows 10, you see we've got 10.0, 10.2.40, the last, in the last place there. Mm -hmm. And then you've got 10.5.86. If you see version 10. 586, so 10.0.10586, that is 15.11. Anything that's above, before that is just the base Windows release to manufacture uh, version, just the base Windows 10 version. So here we've got Windows 10 latest version. You can see we've got a computer called Jack Daniels. 
and then we'll break it down by 3264. We've only got the one Jack Daniels here, and then the older versions that don't have Jack Daniels. And if you look at our filters, obviously the OS equals 10. Um, the OS architecture is 64-bit. And then we use a variable. And then so we use a variable that we've created. Yeah, and you, how do you check the variables? How do you see what that value is? Basically, you go into preferences under variables. Mm -hmm. So file, preferences, scroll to the bottom there, variables. You have your custom variables Which that you, you can, can set up. Yep. yep. And then our system ones. And uh, I, I, we start this off with uh, OS. So I think it begins with a dollar sign is one of our variables. And it's OS. Um, 10 latest, OS Win 10 latest, and it's called, there's the version. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a new one called OS 10 Winver latest name, that's 1511. Mm -hmm. Right, so if we actually click here, you'll see that, I, that we have in the description, you might really want to zoom in on there, but the description says 32-bit Windows 10, 1511, OS version is that version. So that's how you do it. Yep. Look for version 10.0.10586, mm -hmm. and that will, that, that means those are the computers that have 1511. All right, and then we are going to probably call that release, uh, intro introduce. Um, we might even just throw it in the old service pack column. We're, we're still debating that uh, since service packs aren't going to be coming out anymore from Microsoft. This kind of replaces those. Yeah, it'll be releases. So, yeah. yeah, we'll probably just do that. And just another thing on variables, you can use our system variables in your reports. That's correct. Which just makes keep, it easier for you. Just keep in mind that you know we change those values. Your reports are going to change. All right, do we have another question? Could you go deeper into scanning for certain registry entries and files then report on them? Bethany A. Sure. We actually, I actually built an example uh, last night. Mm -hmm. We have actually quite a few examples. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, so both registry and file. So, yeah. Lex, what did you... Um, so you last night I'm something. thinking, I'm like, you know, why don't I come up with something to help people out do their PCI compliance? So I started looking for ports and it's all over the place, but I did find this, your user account control. Whether or not it's turned on or off. Yeah, okay, so that's UAC. UAC. So you want to find out if, 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 they, if UAC is out there. So he actually built a scan profile. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go to preferences and scan profiles. And you call this UAC scan. Now you don't have to have a separate scan profile every time you want to look for something in the registry. Yeah. Um, we've also got something called um, miscellaneous well, files. Actually, in applications, oh, which really? I like to use a lot, you can see I've actually thrown a couple of registry scanners in oh, there. Nice. To add a registry or a file scanner, you just click the add, go down registry. to registry or files, and enter them. And here you can see in this registry, uh, open this one up, looking in the Hive HQ local machine. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So you, but but for your, your example, we just used an individual scan profile. Yep. And you have one registry key to look for UAC, and you're saying, look here in this path. Mm -hmm. And you're not including the subtree. So that no. means the value you're looking for is going to be in here. It should be right there. You don't really want to scan the whole registry. You're going to... It's a lot of data. It takes a lot of time to fill up your database. So you really want to be selective in what you, in what you choose. So once you create this, this scan profile, it's important that you scan the computers with this profile. Otherwise, and, right now, there's no data in the database for me to do the report on. Correct. So we're going to come over here just to all computers. Uh, go to the collection, scan collection, and what are we going to choose? Oh, UAC scan would be an easy one. Mm -hmm. That's the one we want. So while that's scanning, let's pop the report up. We'll talk about filters. Okay, so it's, it's scanning now, uh, doing the computer details, mm -hmm. and then that registry scanner. Yep. So we're going to go back to, uh, I think I put it in miscellaneous reports. Yep. UAC is so off. So this is just looking for UAC is off. That is all this report does. In fact, we'll just quickly define the report so people can see that. In our columns, you're showing... That's my filters there. I'm sorry. In your columns, you're just showing the computer. Oh, sorry. Sorry, JJ. Sorry, everybody. I suck. All right. So you're I'm showing the computer name, and then you're asking, and you're actually then selecting three columns mm -hmm. to show from the registry table. Yep. Just mm -hmm. want to see the path, the value name, and the value. Okay. So let's go ahead and run that. Oh, hey. So these are the machines that have uh, user access control is turned off. Yep. Mm hmm. Now, how can you, uh, by the way, trivia question, how can you change the name of that column in a basic report? Magic. And go to define, <laughs> go to define report, go back to your columns. Mm -hmm. So let's say the value name, well, instead of registry value name, we'll call this UAC. Uh, yeah, UAC setting, something like that. There you go. And then you run the report, and that's going to be the new column name right there. All right. Yeah. So these are the machines now that have. So if you, if, if this is something you're interested in, um, now how would you, how would you move this over to a collection? 
uh, you could go ahead and just come over to uh, New Collection from Report by clicking that. That just take, takes the existing filters that you've got in this report and creates a collection. We call it UAC is off. When you do this, it places the collection on the root of your collection mm -hmm. tree. And where is that going to be? Right UAC there, is off. And now those are the computers that we know don't have UAC now, enabled. The other nice thing about this, obviously, from this report, you built the collection. I can actually, it's an actionable item now. Yeah. If I needed to turn UAC on for those, mm -hmm. I could do a registry. Yeah, you could do registry Change, or, deploy. you know, um, maybe maybe there's a, a group policy that these mm -hmm. machines aren't getting. Yep. So, and, and if go. you it's want actionable. to enable it uh, from group policy. So, yeah, it's an actionable, it's an actionable. That's what, that's a cool thing about collections. The collections, you know, this is what I can use as a target. Mm -hmm. This entire collection is a target for a, a software deployment or, or anything from PDQ deployment. Registry update. Yeah. Um, so, that's, so that's one way. Uh, you have to define, uh, Bethany, you have to define the scanners. Um, and then, and then when, you, when you do your report, it's in the registry table, mm -hmm. all right? Um, you also asked, was there another question before I go on to her other part? Because she had two parts. She had file. Oh, was it? Yeah, she actually, uh, she, and thank you, Bethany. Do you want, for do you want to go back to that previous Well, yeah, question? well, here's the, here's the thing. Bethany, you had submitted this, and I want to thank you for that, because you, you were saying you've got use cases, if I recall, Annie, you were telling me this, use cases that involve both... Um, the needing to find stuff that have registry, as well as um, applications that don't show up uh, in uh, ad remove programs, mm -hmm. the programs and features. In other words, you install a program, it doesn't show up in that part of the registry, so it doesn't show up as an installed application for us, because Windows doesn't see it. It's not something that you can go and add or remove. How do you find those? Well, um, I'll show you a file scanner now. So again, to get your scanners, you go to File Preferences, or what'd you hit? I just hit Control Comma. Control Comma. Mm -hmm. Or File Menu, as, as Lex mentioned. And uh, do I have this in here? Miscellaneous Files. Yep. So I created this one yesterday. I notice we've got the computer details, and then I've got uh, one file scanner here. I'm going to open it up, and we're looking for two different files. Um, we're looking for sfvninja.exe. It's a, a great little. It's an older utility. First, it's a mm -hmm. simple file. Um, simple, file ver simple file verification tool. Um, and then uh, Firefox Portable.exe. Maybe somebody has Firefox Portable, so it doesn't show up as an installed application. But you don't, you don't have to just list out the names here. You can use wildcards. Mm -hmm. Now, I am scanning all disks. That could take a while. Yes. There are times where you, where you know reasonably well where that file is going to be. Maybe it's going to be in program files. So you would change this root directory and just type in something like, you know, percent program files. Now, the reason you're going to want to do that, the closer you can get to where that lands, the faster your scan's going to mm -hmm. run, the less time it's going to take to get your information back. Correct. But, but this will... We'll, Again, we'll if you're looking this. for stuff you don't know. Yeah. And, and a wild, the wild cards we support, if you want to look for all EXEs, you can do a star.exe. Um, or if uh, you can use a question mark for a wild card, the question mark just covers one alphanumeric mm -hmm. digit. All right. Personally, I'm looking for MP3 so I can add to my music so list. So you do a star.mp3. So yeah. we're going to look for these two. <laughs> You're just going to walk right past that, aren't you? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to go back up here to uh, all computers, scan, and miscellaneous files. And the reason I called that miscellaneous files, maybe there's other files, uh, other file scanners that I'm going to want to put in there. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of have that scan profile that I can use. Um, so we're scanning that right now. And under reports, do we have, so here's SFV Ninja. And let's, let's define that real quick. What am I looking for? So you're, a, you're asking, Bethany, how do I find this in a report? In your tables, I like to have the computer name, obviously. But yeah. there's a, a table called File. And uh, once you choose a file, then you, can't, you can only choose computer and file. Mm -hmm. Same with registry and stuff. It's a joint issue. Yep. But now I can say File is this, you know, is, is the column. And then here's all the different options. Mm -hmm. I can look for file version, product version, anything that's in the header of that file. And let's just go ahead and run that. Oh, and the filters, what are my filters? I'm just saying a file equals SFV Ninja, the name equals SFE Ninja.exe. Let's run that. Looks like Guinness and Minchin have it. And there's the, uh, there's uh, how, how would I see the path that that's in? Go back to define report. Add a column. Go to column. I'm going to add a new one. Where? File. Boom. There you go. There it is right there. 
Um, and then, of course, you can have, now that you can create a collection off of this and say, I want to see all the computers that had it. I'm looking at the file version, mm -hmm. so you can say, does anybody have a greater version than this? So, okay, Shane, so we now found machines that have that file. Mm -hmm. Now, what if I want to know all the machines that don't have a file or don't have a program specifically? Because people get really mixed up on this. Oh, that's a great, I mean, very good. Should we? Very good. Yeah, we should. But before that, yeah. Uh, JJ, the, is there another question, sir? Yes, yes, indeed there is. <laughs> is there a limit to the number of filters that can be applied to a collection? Glenn H. Um, I don't know. Uh, when we were designing this, we said no. <laughs> but the reason I say I don't know is it's going to, it's going to be limited by the resources on your computer. We yeah. don't have a hard limit on there. Um, but you know, you, you resort, you could run out of memory, but the laws of physics do. The yeah, laws, laws of physics. physics. So the, the answer is yes, Maybe. but it's not something <laughs> we haven't put in there saying you can't go more than, you know, 30 yeah. filters or something. We haven't done that. We're going to let you, we're going to let you crash and burn if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to earn that popping one. out of my ear. Yeah. Can we put a piece of tape on there? <laughs> <laughs> Just wrap your head in gauze. <laughs> the mummy. All right. Okay. So Lex brought up a very good point. Well, and okay. he does it so he does it so infrequently. I want to jump on this. Easy, easy there. Um, <laughs> just say if we're gonna abuse me, we're all drinking that. Uh, cheers. Yeah. Skull, baby. Okay, so you said you want to see. Let's say I want to see all the machines that do not have I don't know. Firefox. Mm -hmm. Or okay. I mean, we have got a collection like that. But we do have a collection, but I'm gonna show you how to build this. So. Um, we have so, our custom collections. Here's the thing: we're gonna want to know computers because I want to know which computers there are, and I want to know software. Okay. So typically, building a report on this, we're going to select... Actually, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a collection. You're going to do a collection? Mm -hmm. You just messed up my whole deal there. I memorized this last night. You did not. <laughs> you didn't think about this till this morning. All right. So this collection, we're going to call it <laughs> Firefox. Now, we said this is going to be an advanced filters um, webcast. We are going to, therefore, have to show you a simple one before we get there. All right. So a lot of, a lot of you are used to this one. Uh, Firefox is installed. All right. And um, we to, to do that, name. you go to your application. Yep. Um, the application name. Contains. And it, what we're going to do starts with, because all of Firefox, they all start okay. with Mozilla Firefox. I mean, yeah, you could do contains, but if you know they all begin with Mozilla Firefox, it starts with, will be a little faster. All right. When you do a contains, it actually throws Looks it, the whole... un, under, underneath SQL places a wild card on both sides, and so it has to look for everything. Okay. But when you do a starts with, there's just a, a wild card on the end, effectively, that's, in, that's implied. All right, so now anything that starts with Mozilla Firefox. We should get a ton of machines. Now, I just want to point a few things. How many do we have? 68. 68 machines. Excellent. Okay, so now if I go and say I want machines that do not contain Fire, that mm -hmm. have applications that do not contain Firefox. I'm going to duplicate this and show you guys. I'm going to then drag this up underneath Firefox, make it a little easier. And now uh, we've duplicated it. So I'm going to call this Firefox not installed, but here's the, here's the problem that most of you are going to run, you know, into. run into. Yeah, not okay. installed. And we get this all the time. They'll, they'll say, okay, application name. Does not contain. Yeah, does not contain or does not start with. Yep. Most of Firefox. And they think, all right, that's going to be great. Boom, we should have it. But it pretty much shows everything. We've got 106 computers in this one now. We have 106 computers in the database. It's wow. pretty much matching everything. Okay, why is that, Shane? Because... The, you have to kind of put your SQL hat on. What you're saying is, show me every computer that has an application that doesn't start so with Firefox. So Adobe doesn't start with Firefox, mm -hmm. so we're going to get that one. So yeah. any machine has got Adobe. So you want to you want to look at more of an aggregate type thing. Mm -hmm. So what what you and this is where the counterintuitive start, stuff comes. To actually get this where you want it, you want to go back to where you had it, which was in this case it starts with. All right. So we say okay to this. It's going to show us everything that starts with. But you see this. Uh, group filter. We're going to change that to say not any. That means we're saying find all the applications. The way this is run, it says find all the computers that have an application that start with Firefox, and then report all the other computers. Yep. So don't don't report any computer that that matches this. Yep. And then we'll say okay. And these are the computers that don't have it. Okay, so why that is? No, I want to show you something though. Okay, show me something. We have a computer that's offline right now. Um, this is a gotcha for you. Since a lot of you guys do have computers that have never been inventoried, they've mm, been offline. That's a good point. I'm going to add a computer, Coach. This is a 
computer that Chase uses a lot. Mm -hmm. Coach is a valid computer. Oh, it's in there. I thought Coach just turned coach. offline. I thought Coach was. So we're going to do this. I'm gonna, it's offline, so I'm going to change. Let's go to Coach here. It's right there. There we go. I'm going to delete Coach. So Coach does have Firefox, according to the last scan, but he mm -hmm. hasn't been scanned forever. So I'm going to delete Coach right now. And the reason I'm doing this to to show you what would this this would do a in gotcha. your environment. Yes, yeah. this would be a gotcha. Got to be aware. So of. Coach is offline. So we're going to add him back. So we get get new uh, inventory. So we'll get a new computer entry in there, but it's not going to have mm -hmm. any scan information. Oh, you know it. what? He's been off so long he can't be found. Hold on. Wow. Stick with us, guys. I'm going to hurry and. Um, uh, shut down just a computer out there. While he's doing that, I'm going to do what I do best. Here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to use PDQ. Likewise. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to go to, Cheers, let's just go to the computer price. Mm -hmm. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say um, tools. Reboot, sure. shut down. This time I'm just going to say shut down. Don't give it any, any notice. So it's going to shut down. Bang. Right? Price is going down. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to delete price. And I'm going to add that price add back. Add price back. So we just got rid of all the price data. We're going to add the machine back. Mm -hmm. We'll have no scan data. Now we do know price has Firefox on it, just from our last scan. OK, so, so price can't be scanned right now, so it doesn't show up. But guess what? If we go over to Firefox not installed, price shows up there. Why? Because according to us, we've never scanned price. It doesn't have. Well, we don't know that he has any applications. So mm -hmm. when you say, show me any computer, when you look at all the applications, any computer that doesn't have Firefox, he's going to show up. Mm -hmm. That's where you want to say, you want to have another filter filter here. All right. And uh, this can get, also get a little counterintuitive. I can, I can do this all within the same subgroup. Under the computer table, there is a never scanned. So what we say, um, we want to change this to false since we're already saying we don't want to show any computer that's been scanned. Um, so the computer never scanned is false, mm -hmm. um, or pardon me, is true. Yeah. And don't return anything that's never been scanned either. Of you. That's where the not any yep. comes in. So remember, you worked your way from the bottom to the top mm -hmm. on that. So now you see price went from 38 to 37. Price was removed. Yep. Okay. Um, if you want to check out. Once, if you have the collection library, look at our collections because you see a great cheat mm -hmm. sheet on how to on how to accomplish that. So this is how you would show computers that don't have that don't have Firefox. Okay, so once again with that SQL, right? So you got a one to one relationship. Mm -hmm. One computer can have one OS on it, right? Yes. But one computer can have many applications. When you have to start doing that, not any is when you got a one to many relationship. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, because you could say, you know, I could remember how we said don't do. Firefox, you know, application name does not start with. That's because there could be so many applications, as Alexis mm -hmm. mentioned. You can do that with something that's a one-to-one, -one, like an OS. Mm -hmm. For example, I could come over here to say um, uh, this new dynamic collection, um, and we'll say uh, workstations. And then we're going to go computer. Okay. So how do we know what took a workstation? Basically, we're going to look at the OS um, computer name. Now, there's two OSs. There's OS, which is just the short name, like Windows 7 would show 7, seven. 10 would 10. But the OS name is the full name, like Windows 7 Professional or mm -hmm. something. We want to look at the OS name because all of Windows servers have a server in the name. So we're just going to say, show me anything that has a, an OS name that does not contain the word server. And there you go. So another place where, yeah, no, nope, that's perfect. So. Again, a one-to-one -one you can go does not contain because it's only going to have one answer for it. Mm -hmm. um, but notice there's still price there because he matches that. So once again, to do the same thing, OS server does not contain does not contain server. Um, I'm also going to create a new subgroup just to show you a different way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And this group is going to say any, and I'm going to change it to say. Uh, computer name. This one, remember, because I'm, I'm now mm -hmm. doing an any, not a not any. We're going to say never scanned is false mm -hmm. because we're not negating that. And that went from Boom, 86 price to Price is gone. Yep. Okay, so just keep that. Keep just remember you never scanned. Those are going to get you. Yeah. Was there another question? Yeah. 
Can you capture print devices through inventory as well? Glenn R. Hi, Glenn. Uh, the print devices that you can capture, we don't scan printers mm -hmm. or printing devices. Uh, like, you know, we don't, we don't have an SNMP scanner or anything like that. So the closest you can do is if you have a, a, a physical connection to that computer. A local computer. When I say a yeah, local, local, local printer, yeah. A local printer would be something connected via USB, or it could be TCP IP as long as you have a TCP IP port. What mm -hmm. it will not show are computers that um, go to a print server and, and just print. connect to yeah. that. No, you would actually have to scan the computer that has that connection. Yep. So in a uh, token, if we come token over here, on her? token somewhere, go to token printers. There's all the local There's all Because print. token's a, a print server. Yeah. So you can see all these printers. Um, you know, that have a local connection. Most of these are probably, uh, you know, like TCP IP or something. But uh, that's, that's how you do it. Yeah. We don't scan printing devices. We don't scan routers and stuff like that. And then like trying that. to assign them to machines that are mm -hmm. connected, yeah. All right, next question. Could you discuss database size and the impact when scanning the registry and how to make some of that data go away with subsequent scan to control database growth? Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, sub subsequent. Oh, what's the, he's trying. He is. Oh, oh, this thank is you. adorable. All right. <laughs> I'll drink to okay, that, too. That's th yeah, <laughs> a fantastic question. That is a good question. I do want to get into some more complex filters, mm. though. Um, that's, so we're going to answer the question quickly. Um, yes, if you were to scan a lot of files or registry, um, you could fill up your database. So here's the thing. Um, I'm going to go, we, we scanned, let's go to open up a, a computer, and let's go to the registry. This is where you can see all the registry scanners that have come on, right? And you see this information. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lex enable. Oh, so there's there's the one that you threw in there. The, mm -hmm. the uh, anything in the policy system. Yep. If you delete, I'll show you this. We're gonna come over here. UAC scan. If you delete this profile, then any computer that has received that scan profile is going to have data associated with that profile deleted. Mm -hmm. Unless there's a, a duplicate scanner in another profile that has been used. So if, you, if, if Lex had that registry key scanned for in another one, like maybe uh, registry run keys or applications or mm -hmm. something, then that wouldn't be deleted. So now we'll go back to token. Oh. Notice the registry is that Cleaned much lower. There. Yeah. So you delete the scan profiles, you delete the scanners within the scan profile, and... Um, Again, to maintain that size, you know, the more specific you get on registry scans, the smaller mm -hmm. the data set you're going to get. Now, to answer your question, though, let's say you've, you made a mistake and you scanned almost the entire registry for every computer and your database is huge. Well, number one, you want to delete that data. That's how you do it. Remove the scan profile mm -hmm. or the subsequent scanners. Subsequent. He's trying, guys. He's trying. Oh, I succeed. Um, hey. Yeah, so you, you'll do that. I don't like you. <laughs> um, but guess what? If, if you want to reclaim the actual size of the database, SQLite, when it deletes data, does not shrink the database. It just keeps it. I've deleted a huge chunk of data. That is now space that, that can be filled, uh, that can be filled with, with, you know, subsequent... Uh, scans, <laughs> but if you want to if you want to shrink that, you can do this by going over to preferences, mm -hmm. database, database, and click optimize. Now you do this; it, it is going to shut down your background service, so it'll abort any running scans. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's going to shut down PDQ inventory while it does this. But this does the vacuum command in uh, in SQLite, and it does a good job of it. Just be mm -hmm. aware, you know. Yeah, so you, you can see the size of the database. If you've deleted so much data, hit optimize. Now, every time you upgrade PDQ inventory or PDQ deploy, we do an optimize mm -hmm. at that time, yeah. just so you know. So, you know, if you're upgrading every month or so, you, you're probably good. Oh, we're not going to wrap up right now, dude. <laughs> no, I got I to gotta show. All we right, got so, more. We got yeah. like three minutes or something. <clears throat> so, uh, I want to go over here to, um, boy, there's just too many things. Too many things. Okay, uh, so out what's, there. what's the biggest nugget we can give these guys at this point? If you want to see which computers have Java update enabled. Ooh, okay, there we okay, go. Okay, we've got. Um, That's a good one. Remove that filter. We've got a couple of computers that don't have Java update. Uh, how do I look for that? Created a file, a registry scanner that looked for, I'll show you. Well, basically, we look for Java soft, Java update policy. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that has an enabled Java policy update. 
uh, en enable job update value greater than zero. So pretty much anything but a zero is good to go on. If you, if you see, we actually delete that key in our packages. Yeah. Um, but if they have zero, then that, that there, that means it's, it's set to not, not auto update. Uh, if you want to go look at the file scanner, I think I put that in applications. Job yep, update. there it, it is. is. HQ Local Machine Software. I've got two of them. There's Java Soft, Java Update, mm -hmm. and then for those 32-bit uh, Javas on 64-bit machines, there's the Java, uh, there's the WoW 64-32 node in the path. Yep. And I do include the subtree and scan those computers, and then you'll be able to quickly tell which computers have Java Auto Update. Mm -hmm. And then you can just even push out a software package that disables that. Um, Okay, so I guess JJ's telling me we're running out of time. So here's what I want you to do if you have the collection library. Um, notice in applications, we've got uh, PDF apps. Look in PDF readers and Adobe Reader. Now, Adobe recently, last year, they released a new upgrade to Adobe Reader 11. Mm -hmm. They went to Adobe Reader 15, also known as DC, Document Cloud. However, there were two branches yeah. of that. There's Document Cloud. And then there's Document Cloud Classic, Classic, similar to the Windows 10 CB current branch and LTSB, the long-term servicing branch. DC Classic is kind of the old way. It applies updates every quarter, um, and there are no new features, it's just security fixes and, and bug fixes, et cetera. That's the Classic. Uh, the problem is, if you look at the two versions, how are you going to nail this down? If you've mm -hmm. got both in your environment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up Briggles. Go to Applications, look at Reader. Notice he's got Adobe Reader, Acrobat Reader, 15, 0, 10, yada, yada, um, versus somebody that has the classic. So look at that version. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to show you, because what I want you to do is just think about how you can uh, tackle this in a report or other Yeah, filters. well, in PDQ, in PDQ inventory. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Carla, uh, Carla's Applications. Look at those two versions. They're very similar. There's 15006, 15010, et cetera. Here's how we, according to the documentation from Adobe, mm -hmm. here's how they differentiate. In the third part of your version, anything that begins with 2.0 is document cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that begins with 3.0 on that third position mm -hmm. is classic. Is classic. So how do we get around that? Um, how, do we, how do we show that? We use a regular expression. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the uh, DC Classic, how do we determine that? We say any computer name, any computer that has an application that starts with Adobe Acrobat Reader, mm -hmm. DC, but matches a pattern. Actually, this is a, not, we're not even using a regular expression, we're using a pattern. Let's look at that pattern real quick. Go to our preferences, go down to mm -hmm. variables. And if you go to app name or app ver, there we go. There, there it is. If, so we have app ver Adobe Reader DC Classic pattern. That's the name of the variable. Mm -hmm. Notice we're saying anything begins with 15 dot splat. That's the wildcard dot 30 Three. and then splat. splat. Yep. We know that's classic versus 20. And that mm -hmm. way, that's how we do it. So take a peek at those mm -hmm. and you're going to see some great, you're going to see some really good uh, examples of, of collections, uh, of filters. Mm -hmm. um, remember, in your filters, um, you know, you, you're going to have to learn how to use these subgroups. Yep. And uh, you know, by all means, hit us up. Hit us up on support if you have if you have questions. Um, Jay, we do need to wrap it up. Yeah. All right. All right. Too many people dropping off. All right. All right. Huh. Well, yeah. hey guys, thanks. Appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully it, help, hopefully it helps some of you. And Bethany, those are great questions, definitely. Thank you for that. Hey, uh, I'm Lex. Shane, talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you had a question featured, if you'll please email me at webcast at adminarsenal.com so I can get you some PDQ swag. If your question wasn't answered, please do hit up our support site, support.adminarsenal.com. We do want to get your questions answered. We'll see you guys next Thursday.